Good afternoon and a warm welcome to everyone on behalf of CIR Leader and the 9.9 .9 Group to today's CIO Gurukul session. Our guest today is Mr. Anshuman Tiwari, Director and Head of Operational Excellence, DXC Technology. With over 25 years of experience in transformation, innovation, quality and simplification, Mr. Tiwari leads a global team that focuses on DXC's service delivery to customers an ASQ fellow since 2013, and a LinkedIn top voice since 2022. Mr. Trivari is a prolific writer and a mid-career coach, sharing knowledge and expertise with others. Having taught quality principles, methods, and tools to over 10,000 professionals, he has helped clients win several quality awards, including the prestigious Deming Prize. His initiatives have generated over uh, $250 million in benefits focusing on composite outcomes around revenue, cost, customers, and employees with a mission to make an impact and lead people to deliver 10x results. Over his long and distinguished career, Mr. Tiwari has been an invited speaker to more than 100 companies in more than 15 countries, including organizations like Amdocs, ANZ Bank, Aditya Birla Group, HDFC Bank, Hindalco, Indian Navy, ISRO, and more. He has also been a guest speaker at leading academic institutions like ISB, Bits Pilani, IIT Roper, Symbiosis, and Christ College. In today's conversation with Mr. Tiwari, we will focus on how to lead through effective communication and take a look at the role communication plays in professional success. So to just introduce the topic, uh, in today's dynamic and business environment, the ability of leaders and managers to communicate effectively has become very critical. Whether it's aligning teams on project objectives, navigating complex technical challenges, or fostering a culture of innovation, uh, communication lies at the heart of every successful endeavor. Your ability to communicate visions, goals, and strategies effectively is often as important as knowledge and skills. In our conversation with Mr. Tiwari, we look at strategies and techniques to enhance your leadership skills through effective communication. Our speaker will provide some actionable insights and tips that will enable you to clearly articulate visions and goals, inspire and motivate teams, resolve conflicts, and cultivate a collaborative environment. So welcome to the session, Mr. Tiwari. Yeah, thank you, Edward. Uh, that Let's make one promise that this is last time you call me Mr. Tiwari. Uh, it's a little unusual, but uh, I appreciate the sentiment and uh, glad to be here and uh, on, a, on a holiday, at least more than two people, that is you and me, have turned up is, is quite a bonus. So looking forward to it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Anshuman. So let, let me begin by asking you a very basic question. How would you sure. define communication, particularly in a professional context? And so for a mid-career manager and leader, what are the key elements of communication that we should focus on? I think it is. One important point, of course, is that firstly, you know, disclaimer is that I'm no communications expert or a coach. I am a practitioner like many people in the industry. But having managed people over a long career, thousands of people, you know, in multiple companies, and as a consultant with many stakeholders and so on, I've noticed and observed and you know articulated some key thoughts about effective communication. So those are the ones that I will use as my option or, or a reference today. Uh, there are many more qualified uh, and I would say deep experts in this space out there. But what we people like you and me bring is the experience of actually having done some of these things, uh, which is equally valuable compared to some other <clears throat> uh, skill sets people may have. Having said that, quickly coming to your question, so the most common thing I talk about when speaking for about communication is that it is not what launches, it is what lands. Uh, let me explain it a little bit. A lot of people I meet during my coaching uh, sessions. I do, by the way, coach outside of my full-time job and, and, and um, people can reach out to me if they want. But one very common thing I particularly related to Communication, I feel, Giri, is that you know, people have this ability, very strong confidence in their ability to convey. 
uh, and usually that confidence is overconfidence and and sometimes brutally nonsensical confidence because they will speak something muttering looking down looking away and and hope and pray that the other person uh, has has uh, understood this does not usually happen what basically happens is that we think our responsibility for communication is over when we have said something whereas i try and coach them and guide them that your responsibility is over if at all when the other person has understood it the same way that you want it. this includes people at home family friends in the grocery store on the road <laughs> anywhere so work wise it is no different in fact the stakes at work are higher because uh, there is from what you say there is some work to be done uh, and uh, if that communication is not effective is not landed properly then there is a problem so that is one and you are, the second part of your question is more to a corporate um, um, setup like i said while answering my first your first question is that corporate setting is even more critical because look at most global organizations today and i i'll talk in a little bit global context because i i that is most of my experience i have people in 20 plus countries and if i don't have basic communication skills forget advanced and all i how will i even communicate with people from multiple um, cultural backgrounds where english is not even their third language uh, so you know we can argue in india that maybe english is our first language which may not be the case for most people but it is we have spoken it enough to make it close to first language maybe 1.1 or something so yeah. the, uh, the but there are countries where it is the fourth or fifth language they don't uh, speak at all and but that doesn't uh, and shouldn't come in the way of their uh, participation in the organization's growth and uh, management and that is one of the big challenges that many corporate people today face and they fail uh, many of my team members in this role and earlier roles have actually failed in in understanding this so this is a unique challenge that comes up there are other unique challenges like age and culture and background which we can peel the onion and go yeah. uh, so i think as industry has in general grown and ballooned and mushroomed these kind of challenges will will be there uh, like is true for every other aspect right so you do performance management communication is one aspect only uh, you you may have supply chain management and other things same things uh, right so that would be my uh, slightly longer than expected answer to your first question no that, that that's perfectly fine i think so uh, i think you made the point that it's not just enough to communicate but to also see that it has landed as you put it and that it has been understood and that you know totally. so therefore you know somebody can take some action or give a reaction to it and very often as you mentioned that people tend to throw it over the wall and hope that somehow it has been achieved i will give you very very stark example sorry um, but um, just to extend the example so that people understand during the end of the year every senior leader asks a manager have you explained to person xyz that he or she is being fired at the end of the quarter oh yes absolutely sir i have given many hints during the year this will not be a surprise and then it is a sur surprise because the person impacted say that but throughout the year you said i was doing well oh that is only my way of saying but your way of saying has communicated to him or her that they are doing well and then now you go and say that by the way you know you are not needed in the organization and there is a cost issue or whatever other issues so particularly in this environment we see this happening a lot and i'm i'm not for a moment trivializing layoffs and other things but much of the pain comes through because of poor communication during the whole process had the communication been better maybe the person to be laid off would have taken some action early in the cycle and taken some positive action either for improvement or for looking for another job so just to connect to the current situation where particularly in the it industry there is a lot of stress around layoffs and all uh, i do believe uh, that a large portion of it is because of poor communication uh, there's another thing that you had said earlier you know uh, about the hurdles to effective communication one is of mm. course 
the style in which you are communicating to people. As you said, some people have a very oblique style of communication, whereas some are more direct. Uh, you know, so typically what we refer to as, you know, the more Japanese style of communication, which tends to be non-confrontational versus the very American style of conversation, which tends to be very direct. Where do you think in India we are? I mean, we also try to avoid conflict, at least direct conflict. Uh, general answer is that whatever we do is terrible. Uh, <laughs> we are very, very poor communicators and we tend to believe that we are God's gift to mankind. Uh, particularly in the last few years, no disrespect to anybody, you have a conversation, the people try and quickly connect it to nationalism and patriotism and thousand years of Indian history and some will extend it to today's first day of Ramana, <laughs> the, uh, you know, the fasting. So they goes to into bizarre uh, places. The simple thing is that throughout school, growing up, most Indian families don't let children communicate. These children grow up and become managers and employees. And they can't overnight learn communication, effective communication. Most Indian families, if you look at some child, child asks something, chupro, or this is not for you. I understand that there will be some topics which are not for them, but there is a way to explain because that kills the curiosity, which is number one step in communication. Then we never, apart from doing namaste and manakam and other such, uh, you know, uh, greetings, we don't teach children anything. And then we want that when the next com you know, com contest comes up in the school, our child should come first. You have not given anything to this child. You came last in every elocution contest, but you want the child to come first. The child always has the pressure of fulfilling both the parents' unfulfilled dreams. <laughs> uh, so, so I think this whole thing that you know we we are effective communicators and all is complete total nonsense. We are very poor communicators. I since I managed global team for many years, I see communicators from many countries. I'm not saying they are better because they are from another country, or I'm saying that they are better because they have a certain investment in the art of effective communication. Now coming to styles. I would strongly urge that this audience, whether they are listening to this live or later on, to forget things about style. You know, style is an excuse uh, we have. Australians are very direct. Now, if they say something, should you feel hurt or not hurt? Uh, I've had Australian managers for, for some time in my career. They're really very direct um, uh, and sometimes very crude language also. But right after that, I have had, come on, we'll have a cup of coffee or a smoke or whatever, whatever is their poison. And initially I thought that they are doing this to just to make me feel good. No, they are doing it to make themselves feel good. That's all. Um, the smoke or coffee is not for me. It is for them. So we read too much in sometimes in this style. The core message is more important. If I'm being asked to pull up my socks, whether it is told to me sweetly, rudely, brusquely, or in any other manner, uh, I'm being asked to pull up my socks. So we should, in a, particularly in global environments, we should focus on the message. If required, please ask. So are you telling me that I have performed, underperformed in the last one year in these three areas and you would like me to at least improve in these two areas? Now, this is a closed-ended question uh, and no manager should be able to get this wrong. They may get annoyed that half an hour I have explained to you you can always say that, yeah, maybe my first language is not English and I have difficulty uh, comparing. So I'm just trying to summarize. Nobody will object to this. No culture across the world. I've had managers and people with people in my team. So I've been manager for people from many countries and my managers have been from many countries, including and peers and team members. Uh, so I we sometimes give over importance to style because we are trying to look for an excuse. Psychologically, we are trying to look. If this thing goes wrong, I can always excuse Giri's uh, exit uh, or uh, limited, not in your case, but somebody else. Uh, and uh, for example, I had team members in Portugal and um, Brazil. They speak Portuguese uh, and uh, their English sounds like Portuguese. Uh, and I'm sure our English sounds like Hindi or Tamil or anything. Because it has those annotations and context and everything. Now, 
and my i have had team members who would say that sir i can't understand what this you are not trying you today you have google translate today you have you can type live text and why can't you understand so that is my one of my views that you know uh, style is of course important but we give it too much importance um, in a global environment you can't hide behind that style wall for too long you will be thoroughly exposed uh, another thing that uh, you had sort of uh, uh, referred to which was culture mm -hmm. and context so you know do these become hurdles to effective communication they do um i mean i did give an example of indian families and people, children growing up uh, but particularly people children when like you and i were children and um, or the previous generations since then things have been better you know schools are putting giving a lot of emphasis on speaking and opportunities to speak and so on uh, but yes culture setting backdrop context plays a, plays a lot of role uh, in some cultures, it it is children are encouraged from an early age. In other cultures, they are not. In some cultures across, um, it's quite okay to have open conversations on topics where in other cultures they are considered either taboo or not to be discussed or something of that kind. So that also has an impact. Um, uh, in some cultures, for example, there was this very famous um, study on South Korean plane crashes. Uh, I don't know if you, uh, this is given in Malcolm Gladwell's book as well, but I'll, I'll give in a summary that there, there is this, um, there was a trend notice that many South Korean uh, airlines were having mishaps or near mishaps and even crashes. And one of the reasons, and this was particularly happening when both were, both pilots were South Koreans or, or Koreans, let's keep it simple, right? So, uh, so there was of course a detailed investigation and it was discovered that this is primarily in almost every case, the junior officer or junior pilot or co-pilot had alerted the senior pilot in some way. But because their nature is so, their culture is so hierarchical and so uh, respectful, reverend, that they never openly, clearly said that there is an issue, including all of this leading to crashes and both of them dying. I'm making this stark because this is, actually real study and it was eventually realized that you know the the uh, pilot training across the world and particularly in cultures like this has to be uh, we have to include sensitization for non or, or removing these hierarchical mindsets or or more reverential mindsets now this is clearly cultural uh, nobody told them they didn't learn anything and almost all the cases were similar so this is clearly cultural this happens uh, so yes uh, many many oriental south asian cultures have a slightly leaning towards the reverential but the moment you lean towards australia it changes because maybe most of australia what we know today is actually more uk than uh, anything else and so there are there are changes it is very important to understand uh, it's very important to understand the culture, context, where the person might be coming from. So, of course, it's we, not a 100% uh, guideline. So, so do you see this in uh, Indian organizations as well? This uh, phenomenon of people deferring to authority or being very uh, reverential towards senior figures. So hesitating to communicate things which may not be good news, uh, which may not conform to the thinking of the boss, despite the mm -hmm. fact that, as you said, may lead to a crash, you know, they're very yeah. well. Good. So I've known a lot of people in public sector and government organizations, and there this is significantly higher. And I don't think it is just to blame that, you know, the culture is vindictive or thing. It, the culture is actually reverential and um, mostly like like we said hierarchical and reverential and people are trained from day one in that so so it, they become it becomes part of the eventually what is culture culture is a pattern behavior pattern right? right so over a period of time your behaviors uh, whether forced induced or you know uh, your own 
become a pattern and that then gets the word culture uh, of course there are more nuances but i'm not this is not a talk on culture but uh, but um, it definitely happens but see the magic is that uh, giri that when we and i've been in the services sector for since about 2000 uh, maybe a little earlier now uh, and so 25 odd years uh, i started working 1994 so first few years in manufacturing where i saw the other type of culture but ever since i moved progressively i have seen indians in global settings are fairly uh, confident and uh, clear uh, i don't see that problem which means the competence is not the issue it's usually the culture and context that makes us behave in a certain way and i do think that you know i have no reason to believe that indians are any better than any other uh, nationality in the world we are similar and uh, people of every country have the same opportunity intelligence capability uh, i have seen my in my own teams from you know, people from bulgaria leading a global team and doing it really really well and they can't really always speak uh, as fluently as many others but they do they so yes uh, it is a issue but also it can be overcome and i have given example of the same culture people people mostly in the it setup you will see globally I, I, indians uh, occupy very high positions in it uh, companies across the world not just in indian it companies but in even in global it companies one of the core reasons has to be their ability to communicate otherwise they can't get to that position right so i'm sure they have other skill sets uh, and which are more important for that but uh, for that position but this has to be a non negotiable it will be there so another uh, related question particularly in uh, more particularly in it when mm. we have this constant influx of younger people coming into mm. the organization and obviously there is what you would call a generation gap between say the managers and the people they are managing and the teams they are managing yeah. so do you see a communication gaps arising out of this i do see but giri what is new in this right so for for the entire time that work has existed as a enterprise right so from the time that man and i when i say man it includes women everybody when man started to work for others right maybe 50000 years ago maybe 100000 years ago whatever time whenever that happened this would have happened when some people got older uh, younger people got into the uh, and in earlier times the average human mortality rate over age was about 25 30 as only 200 300 years ago it used to be in the 30s only correct so the younger people would have come into the workforce even earlier than they do today so this is not a new problem uh, we just have social media and linkedin and other stuff to make noise about it uh, the, uh, in my view this is not even a problem this is an assumption this is how life is we all will get older and younger people will replace us and younger people will come with new set of learnings background skill sets uh, and it is our responsibility to learn all that they already think they rule the world and uh, when we were younger we also thought that way right so we we cursed all our managers parents everybody neighbors neighbors dog everybody was useless Um, what makes us think that the younger generation today doesn't think of us the same way they also think of us the same way the way we thought of our seniors this is how life is i often say that when you have a deep issue you can make it as a assumption and work around it and so that is uh, this, this is the way i see it i think the positives of younger people coming to the workforce are more energy vitality enthusiasm ideas enterprise ability to learn knowledge of new things and and drive and so many other things the one area that you don't connect with them is their communication style maybe they look at their phone when they are talking to you that doesn't mean they are listen not listening you don't have the ability of talking and listening at the same time they have uh, it's futile to believe that they 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 don't have and you have or either way or vice versa so my general view is that the fact that younger population will enter the workforce every year and older people will leave the workforce every year is the reality of 
workplace. Now, find a way. Uh, don't blame uh, either the younger people. Uh, I, I, a lot of my new friends in the last five, six years are in their 20s. Uh, and of course, courtesy LinkedIn, because being a top voice, you interact with many other top voices and, you know, there is a bond. And, uh, LinkedIn has promoted a lot of top voices from the younger lot because they are making a lot of important, they are very important in how they present a topic. So I see a lot of new perspective, you know, they are fascinating, amazing how they think of some things and the courage and uh, and industriousness that they have we just are living in some false world that we are better than everybody else and our generation is the golden generation it is not every new generation is the golden generation thank you uh another question is you know uh we uh, we of course talked about you know communicating across cultures across languages but what about communicating up and communicating down and communicating across in an organization do we have to adopt different strategies when we do this? I mean, strategy will be a loaded word, but tactics or or or, or method, I can definitely say. Right. So certainly, in a global setup, if you are if your manager is of a non English speaking uh, background, let us say, you will have to invest time. You can't sit and say that this fellow doesn't understand English and all that. That is nonsense. It is your duty to make the effort. He or she might not make the effort, or may not. It may not occur to him or her uh, because they are fighting bigger battles, right? So uh, that certainly is the case. Uh, same with your colleagues in other countries, and and if you have team members, if you have team members, the first equation I shared will be reversed. So they will make the effort. Uh, hopefully, and and that is a sign of whether they are growing in their maturity and and across the world. Also. So this will be one that do invest. Second is improve your writing. I think uh, I I put I am still of a world that I don't believe that younger people don't read and don't write well. They read and write fairly well. It's just that we write in how we want to read and how we want to write, not how they want to read and how they want to write. And and. There are enough indications that all this accusation that younger people only like to read SMS and all that is wrong. They read quite a bit uh, and they like um, proper, clear communication. So it is our inability to construct a proper sentence and a paragraph and an argument, which we blame on their inability to understand or their maybe interest in more short form content so writing is extremely important we are not writing very well uh, as a as a population i think i still after many meetings i still send out uh, email uh, properly crafted think over it and that's more or less become the system of uh, some kind of a record that you know these are the decisions we made even if there was some verbal in um, uh, ambiguity left during the meeting usually the email clarifies or it at least provides an opportunity to non-English speaking people to read it in peace and understand, oh, so I said yes to something I didn't should not have. Let me go back uh, and, and correct it. So first, first is this, you know, dealing with younger people and, and this thing. second is writing, I would certainly think. And uh, more importantly, third would be Investing non-work time with people. So when you when invest a, a non-work related time with people, you tend to understand the person a lot better. So their motivations, their drives, their interests, and then things can be. I'll give you an example. Several years ago, I, I had a ongoing, my department, not, not me personally, my function had an ongoing feud with another operations function. Uh, the head of that function was Matt, Matt White. And uh, eventually we met after, a, we had a leadership meeting where I asked him after that meeting, Matt, you have five minutes. He said, yeah, yeah, sure, uh, we had. And this was the time when ashes were going on. And uh, Matt is an Australian. So, uh, and Shane Wong was, the late Shane Wong was not doing so well. We had a good conversation, two, three minutes, and then said, by the way, this is something stuck. Oh, yeah, I know about it. Um, 
let's let set up some meeting i'll send somebody one of my best people with another half an hour it was resolved then this feud was going on for three months the only thing i did was to introduce a top i knew that matt liked cricket i knew he played cricket as well so um, i had already invested and in, to understand what the person was and then used that to open the doors till then he had closed the doors completely he was not willing to listen or discuss even now this may be of course a strike of luck also because i got the information and cricket is a topic that i am also comfortable with he was also comfortable with it may not always happen but you have to try i have had similar conversations on fountain pens not many people know that i still write with a fountain pen for example um but um, and that has helped me strike several conversations um, around that or books uh, like you can see I, i do have a few books uh, but find something to connect first connect and then look for this thing nobody is looking for a transaction in life everybody is looking for a good time that okay we have come to work we'll have a good conversation i mean i said yes to this conversation more also because you know i will get to talk to somebody who is from a different field and uh, understand how they think and what else is happening in life maybe the questions will be uh, will force me to think in a certain way and so on so yeah that reminds me that uh, do you want to take questions uh, yeah so uh, in fact one of the questions is from vikash shrivastav and his question is exactly this how to have better and clearer communications with leadership in an organization so uh, thank you vikash for the question uh, i mean this is a whole chapter in itself but in simple terms firstly don't take too much pressure you know so when you have too much pressure that and thinking that you are unable to communicate with your leadership effectively you will make more mistakes secondly treat them as people only uh, many times we treat them as overly reverential situations and you know sir and ma'am and everything and in that you know i would say ceremony <laughs> the, the ceremonial <laughs> gestures the message is lost so uh, and thirdly i would say that improve your narration you know what are you asking for i have been in situations where somebody wanted 5 minutes and after 30 minutes i am asking man what did you want what is the point we overly think that we are clear others are not clear right? please challenge that notion many times the if somebody is in a leadership position uh, one or two or three layers above you they have reached there most likely because of skill sets hard work outcome many other things it is futile to believe that they will not have these basic skills so they will have of course there will be some exceptions uh, there will be people who will not have these skills but generally everybody in senior positions will have these skills so if your messaging is clear and uh, it will go through so my suggestion would be rehearse your messaging uh, bring down your asks from 5 or 6 i you know for example there are many meetings where people ask for four five things and three of those things are completely trivial they didn't need my view my opinion my approval on those three things why are you asking me for these three trivial things it reduces the value of the two important things that you wanted to ask may as well ask only for those two important things i can understand you want to cushion the conversation and you may want a third one just to make it look balanced and so on or you are negotiating that okay if i ask for three i'll get two i can understand but uh, not more than that so uh, simplified lesson uh, because is that don't overestimate your ability that you are communicating well and they are not understanding they are you know you know in a position because of certain skill sets and may already have skill set thank you uh, i think uh, tarun has uh, two questions and one is about non verbal communication and what is its impact on you know making or breaking the deal and the second question is about you know listening and what mm. is the role that it plays in effective communication so both are in the same space tarun uh, thank you very much uh, firstly non verbal is extremely extremely important because there are enough studies which range that the importance of non verbal communication could be anywhere between 50 to 75% sometimes even more right 
uh, we are not here to debate the percentage, but the common message is that it is extremely important. So how particularly in face-to-face -face meetings, you know, today the term offline, online, <laughs> or in-person meetings, in-person meetings, you can certainly judge whether the person is actually interested in the point of view or not. I have known people who will say yes to everything and not do anything. And I have known other people who will fight tooth and nail and say yes to one thing, but by the time you are at your desk back, they have started doing work on that one thing. They will take time to agree. They will need a lot of arguments. But once they have said yes, uh, they will do it. Uh, and there are other yes people who say yes to anything and everything and never do anything. So you can judge these things from uh, non-verbal communication or you know, I would say quasi-verbal, you know, in between something, people have a tendency to saying yes to everything. And you can figure out that, oh, if this person is saying yes to everything, doesn't have a spine, how will he or she be able to deliver on this? So that is one non-verbal thing that I focus a lot on. The others, of course, in a, in a similar, if you are from a similar background, and then I try and look at whether the person is looking you in the eye, whether the person is smiling or not. But these are slightly personal choices. Sometimes people do hesitate to look you in the eye. Sometimes people do hesitate to smile. And um, and I don't pay too much attention to this. There are other things, uh, of course, about nonverbal, which are better described in, in many other books and, and videos that you will see how people sit and uh, you know cross-legged versus split-legged and this and that. Generally, they are important, but please don't again think of them as the only indicators because people may have a preference of sitting in a certain way. That doesn't make them less interested or more interested. It may be a clue. It may be an indicator. And that's where you should leave that at. And particularly when you work in a very globalized setup, you will see that a lot. I, mean, I, I know one person for years he slouches when he sits on a chair. But he's one of the most attentive and most uh, enterprising persons I have known. Uh, that mannerism that he has is just a reflection of how maybe he grew up in a family and, and a personal choice. Or maybe a medical condition. I don't know. I've never asked. I, I don't, don't want to ask. <laughs> I have zero interest in that. So, um, second part of your question, I think Tarun was listening uh, or, or yeah, something like listening, that. Listening, right? yes. Yeah. What role does listening play in communication? Oh, very, very high. I think this is even more important. And in a way, listening is also nonverbal because when you are listening, you are not speaking. So your communication is nonverbal. You can not only listen properly, you can nod, you can show gestures, you can you know use your hands, eyes, and, and give that confidence to the person that you are listening. That is extremely important. So core thing in listening is to be able to communicate to the other person that you are indeed listening. Uh, one of the biggest mistakes in listening is that we are making the effort to listen, but don't communicate that we are making the effort to listen. For example, keeping your phone away or keeping it upside down or looking at the person uh, and or making notes sometimes. And like in many meetings when I'm making notes, I let the person know that I'm actually making notes. So don't think that I'm writing something, grocery list or something. <laughs> Hmm. Um, so that is another factor. Uh, of course, the, the topic is bigger, Tarun. Uh, uh, thank you for your question. But these are two points I thought I'll make. So one more question, and this is again from Vikas, and he asks, you know, how to be an effective communicator in a politically influential ecosystem? Mm. Uh, you know, in a, in a corporate environment, uh, that is somewhat political. Okay. Um, see, political environment is a part and parcel of life uh, because um, us calling somebody names is not going to change the situation. So that is number one. Again, this is one of the things where I say that uh, I am fully aware that this will be real in some situation, but don't over, over value the 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 role it can play. Secondly, this sometimes political situations are like, you know, those boulders on the road. You have no way to remove that boulder. So what do you do? You go around them. 
so you try and avoid those topics and hope for a better day uh, particularly when there are two warring factions and you are in the middle of i've been in those situations where i was both parties considered me as part of the other party <laughs> So, so what do you, what do you do? And I was neither close to I mean I was close to neither of the people warring or, or fighting or arguing. Uh, the only thing you can do is that stick to facts, avoid gossip, don't entertain too much uh, gossip, and never never talk about what you had what what you heard in a closed door. Mistake we made is that we indulge in that gossip and politics the moment. We take that conversation out to anybody. Uh, then you are part of that politics. Right? Then you are doing exactly what is uh, what they are doing, or, or what is that? This is the big mistake I see in people. We come out. Oh yeah, this man again started his politics. He was talking to this fellow. He said he is like this. He said Jatinder is like this. Namini is like this. What are we doing? We are doing the same thing. Right? So uh, if you don't like it, if you can't play the game, at least don't. Help it mushroom or or grow, so that kind of things. So the final question, at least from me, in your writing, you often allude to the philosophy of brick by brick. For the benefit mm -hmm. of the people who are attending this webinar, can you quickly take us through it? Sure. So um, I think for some clarity, Giri, of course, is that uh, the term. It, has just stuck. So it is not that I um, built a brand around it or anything. The term has just stuck over the last two years or so. Mostly because many of my presentations use that phrase brick by brick. And those who have attended my talks will know that I usually have one slide and that is the maximum I use. It will include thank you and welcome and everything. So my preference is not to use slides. But I ended up doing at least two presentations, uh, two large conferences last year where I was a speaker and um, the phrase was big public. The background to that, uh, and then of course in my LinkedIn profile uh, uses the phrase because it's a, it's a phrase I like and that conveys what I think and how I think. And in most situations, that's how I talk as well. So it has stuck. So that's the background to this, those who may not know. Um, so if you did check my LinkedIn profile, uh, you will see actually the phrase being used and also a, a image of bricks, uh, which hopefully is non-copyrighted. So nobody should <laughs> tomorrow turn up and uh, file a case. But to explain what it means, uh, essentially it means that everything in life before it is visible to others is brick by brick. So the metaphor is, you know, you see a wall being made. Uh, you generally see the wall after it has reached a certain height. So when it has reached a certain height, till then you are laying the bricks, brick by brick. And then people, oh, fantastic wall or such a tall wall or such a robust wall or other things. So we end up seeing only the last bit of creation and forget or don't understand or don't invest time in understanding the, the bricks that have been laid earlier. So building a career, particularly intentional career, which is most of my talking on LinkedIn and other platforms is building an intentional career. So you, you do it with intention and attention. This is the other kind of AI I talk about, attention and intention. So artificial intelligence will do what it has to do. But we certainly can have attention and intention about our careers today. So for AI might take your job tomorrow, but your stupidity will take your job today is is the message in general. So in most of my coaching and when I work with people, I, I keep reminding them that, look, put the bricks in place. So improve your communication, you know, which is the topic for today. Uh, another format uh, I use is, you know, Shine. So, and Shine is an acronym, uh, which I use um, over the last few years of coaching I've developed it. The S is for socially fluid. You know, if you're not socially fluid, you will be awkward. You, how will you connect? H is for hard work. Nobody fires a hard working person. Uh, I is for intellect or creative problem solving. Can you solve problems for some? Nobody has an issue with somebody who solves a problem. 
or can solve a problem. N is for numbers. You meet your numbers wherever you are. Don't look for excuses. Meet your numbers, whether you're in sales, operations, wherever you are, HR, wherever. And E is for emotionally agile. So you will need to be emotionally agile. There will be setbacks. Uh, you can't be a victim and moan and groan and say that, you know, for long. I mean, of course, we are all human, so we will feel bad. But you get up and say, okay, fine, today is a new day. or We'll, we'll make a fresh start. Uh, so many of these things are part of the brick-by-brick brick conversation. And hopefully, I'll someday write a book uh, which will include all of this. Um, so, yeah. So in summary, brick-by-brick brick is my philosophy of saying that... Uh, we fight, our battles are all brick by brick. What the world sees is the wall, which is much later. And uh, we all have to focus on that. And we can't focus on the final version only because uh, uh, that process we have to put in place. And this is usually true for 99% of people because, you know, I'm, I'm keeping out certain geniuses who, who have multi talents you know so they will they will be good at this and that and will pick up things very quickly so for them of course you know god has been kind and life is different uh, but for most people it's a grind it's a, it's hard work so that's brick by brick thank you thank you anshuman for sharing your perspectives particularly on the subject of you know communication and leadership it's been uh, very, very interesting talk that we have had. And I think we have had some, some fantastic questions also from the audience. So thank you uh, for being here and for doing this session and for really sharing your uh, experiences and your expertise. I'm sure everybody has found your viewpoints very useful and helpful. So, but however, we've run out of time. So we need to bring this session to a close. And so my thanks also to everyone who attended this session and, you know, posted these questions and comments. And I do hope that you found this uh, webinar interesting and informative. Please do send in your feedback and your comments. My colleague has posted a feedback form. So that would really help us, you know, organize more such sessions in the future. So thank you once again, Anshuman, for being here and for being part of this session. It's been lovely having you and to have sure. for this really great conversation. Thank you. Totally, totally my pleasure, Giri. And to anybody in the audience, if you want to connect or, or reach out, you, I'm fairly active on LinkedIn. You can do so. I'll be happy to take more questions. Assuming that you had a question but could not ask it uh, for any reason at all. No reason to feel shy about it. I am fairly approachable and can take questions later on. So thank you once again. Thank you, Giri, and the entire CIO and leader team. And bye -bye. we look forward to seeing you all in another session of CIO Gurukul. Meanwhile, it's goodbye from CIO Leader. Have a great week ahead. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.